or read it. Anyway, he um, was a very wealthy man, very famous man, but he and he was actually in, involved with these testings, and uh, he didn't really care for the way the government was doing it. He thought, well, there's got to be a better way to prove the creativity inducement of the drug LSD or acid. And uh, what he did was he got his buddies together, the little group called Merry Prank, the Merry Pranksters, and they were, uh, yeah, I mean, when you hear of like Neil Cassidy and that, they were some real wild bunch here. Uh, and they headed out from uh, San Francisco. They were going to head straight across the country, all the way there, all the way back. Where? In, to, uh, New to New York City. <coughs> yeah. So he had the school bus, and he fixed it all up, and he you know, made sure that there was enough room and everything on board for all kinds of stuff, including uh, some bags of pot and a whole whack of uh, LSD. And they also had a bunch of paint that they put on the bus that the, the, they were just having fun with it. So they started to paint the bus, bus. And further, the bus is called further because it was going further in, into the creative zone, if, if you're going to refer to the, the electric acid Kool-Aid test, was to take people further and further and further into their creativity. And that's why the name further. Further in here is spelt differently than it ended up also, both, there was two different uh, titles for the bus, one with the UR and one with the ER. And what were you going to say? No, I was just going to add because I was, uh, when, when I did the re was doing some research, it started out as he had a station wagon and a couple of buddies and more and more of his friends wanted to go. Oh, that's cool. That's how they ended up getting the bus. <laughs> okay, that's so the part I didn't know. Yeah, they decided yeah. On, yeah. on the bus so, so that they could put more people on the bus. And it was for one of his books that he had written, not the One Fool of the Cuckoo's Nest, but right. it was for one of them. And he was going to New York to uh, introduce it, basically, in oh, New that's York. Cool. So, that's yeah, see, so and these things. And that, actually, that's what we want these live things to be about, is to actually add to it, add to the story if we can. If, if you guys, and please, you know, I know if I was on your end right now, I wouldn't be involved. But I'm, I'm going to, you know, ask you guys to get chatting with us. Yeah, so anyway, when they did the, they took the bus across, anybody that wanted to paint on the bus was allowed to paint on the bus. It, it never stayed the same. Uh, and uh, it became really one of the very first pieces of psychedelia, Psychedel yeah. right? Psychedelia. And these guys were on the bus, they were heading across, they were the first hippies. Uh, they were really free spirits and, and they were really a strong part of the original hippie movement. So anyway, the, the start of the hippie movement happens here, uh, and Neil Cassidy, he, these guys, I mean, they didn't need their drugs. They really, uh, they were way out there to start, like really, really way out there. And I, you know, I'm sure with uh, Ken Kesey, he was, uh, he was really, uh, you know, what they call audacious, or they were aggressive yeah. with their attitudes. I mean, you know, it was all freedom movement and for they, that. And they really didn't know at the time that they were kind of part of or starting the hippie movement. No, I mean, no, no. Nobody no, really knew what planned. a hippie movement yeah. was was back yeah. then because we're talking the si around 62 was when he started yeah. testing the drugs. So anyway, going back to the hippie movement, so, and it, it means a lot to me because that's, I mean, to me, I was a hippie. We lived it. Yeah, we lived it. <laughs> I was there, man, it was like cool, you know. So I'm like, oh, I saw like Bill Clinton there. But <laughs> 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 anyway, I, my, the weird thing about me is I, I never really smoked at all. I was, I loved the free, the, the spirit of free, free living, what do they call it? I mean, freedom movement, free right? Love. Free love. Free <laughs> love. Summer of 69. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And, and uh, I love that, but I didn't, I never got into drugs. I, I, I'm actually, you know, everybody that knows me knows Actually, I think I, I'm more of a drinker today than I've ever been, and I probably have like three three glasses of wine a, a week. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's Kelsey's fault. <laughs> yeah, 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 so it was the boat this year did it to me, you know. And, uh, but I've never been a drinker. I don't like something that alters my mind. I'm, uh, I, I, I feel it, like I'm not really disciplined in many ways, but I'm disciplined when it comes to my mind. I need that mind to be working really, really clearly. 
And uh, so uh, I think the first time uh, we could talk a little bit of the, the habit of Colleen and I, when we got together, I think it was 1976, was the very first time I right. ever tried one. Yeah. And uh, it, just like Bill Clinton said, he says, you know, he only took two puffs of a marijuana cigarette, <laughs> but he didn't inhale. And I only took two puffs of a marijuana cigarette, I swear to God, <laughs> but I did inhale. <laughs> I inhaled once and it didn't do anything to me and I inhaled twice and it was like I never wanted to do that again. That was just horrible to me. It just uh, it took me in a place I didn't belong. So anyway, in the Magic Bus, we've got a lot of characters that are happening in here. There's some really special little twist to it. Ironically, Jack Nicholson is on the bus. The term back in those days that came through right now if you're if you're uh if you're uh, if you're an artist and you're against society today you're on the bus and that's what it was like back then the creatives were if you sold out to society like timothy leary was the one of the, the corporates the man right if yeah. you sold out to the man yeah. you were off the bus you know and if you were gay and you turned straight you were off the bus right and if you did drugs and you were off the drugs, you were off the bus. So what happened what here is, and ironically, is Jack Nicholson is on the bus. Well, he's the only guy in this whole picture that uh, never was on the bus he, he, because he was always on the man side. He, you know what I mean? He, he had no problem with making a ton of money in any way he had to, right? So that's the little bit of irony and, and people ask why Jack Lem uh, Jack Nicholson is the only one on the bus but and that's why but it, we go across this thing we've got some pretty cool characters in here one flew over the cuckoo's nest one of uh, uh, of uh, well we'll just make sure we we show him off that's Ken Kesey himself and uh, his one of his buddies was Andy Warhol they they certainly partied and I, sh I left out one piece is when they went across on this trip they would go to every major city along the way, and there was a pre-planned party, and that's what was the uh, acid, the electric acid Kool-Aid test, was you went to this party that was pre-planned, and they had a great big punch bowl of Kool-Aid, and they give you a little Dixie cup for a buck, and it was laced with enough LSD that kept you going for a couple days, and that's what they were doing to test this stuff out, stuff called LSD. So anyway, they went across, and, and, and a, a lot of the buddies were here. You see right down in here, there's an actual copy of the original copy of his original cover of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So Andy Warhol's kind of just sitting back, pondering. He's not a musician. A lot of the people in here are in the 27 Club. What do they call it, the 27 Club? They, they passed away at, at the age of 27 years old. Uh, not all of them, well, but you got, yeah, Hendrix. Hendrix. Yeah, you got Jimmy Hendrix, or Jimmy Morrison. Janice Joplin. Janice Joplin, and oh. the rest are still, well, actually, uh, this one here is uh, Andy Garcia, but he passed away at a much older age. So w I'll go through these. Uh, Jerry Garcia, who's, you know, they, they got to know Andy each other. Jerry Garcia, I just realized. Jerry Gar Did I see Jerry? The first time. Did I see Andy Garcia? Yeah, yeah. Jerry Garcia, yeah. okay, of the Grateful Dead. I love him in his little shorts here, hanging around the fire. Uh, and right beside him is Bob Weir. Bob Weir here is very, very young. Actually, I probably could have made him look a little younger. He was actually 17 years old. He's w really the only one out of the bunch here that, well, I shouldn't say out of the bunch, but out of the entertainers who really was known to be on the bus. For sure he was on the bus because he was 17 years old. He had been playing music with Jerry Garcia uh, Garcia taught him how to play in San Francisco and uh, he he was just done with life he says you know I'm gonna do I'm gonna jump on this bus that he heard about and uh, I'm gonna go and join the circus and that's how he actually became a musician that from that day forward his life changed and turned into he turned to Bob Weir the guy from the Grateful Dead I don't think the band was really formed but every no, time they went into a t town they get up on stage, they play their hearts out, and uh, and that's how it came to be. Uh, in Ken Kesey, he did, they did wear these hats once, all the prankster hats. I, you know, it'd be kind of cool to have one of those, wouldn't you it? You go it? right in. I, I, want, I want one of those. <laughs> you can go I, right can in. Can I get one of those, yeah? Please, please, can I have? Can I have? It's my birthday. Mr. No. Jingles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Janice Joplin here, um, Janice, 
this is a it's kind of a well there's some couple of weird stories here Janis Joplin in here is teaching the almighty Jimi Hendrix on an acoustic guitar how to play Bobby McGee and Bobby McGee was important to me to put in this piece because like Janice never really knew that Bobby McGee would become a monster hit I think she died about three months or two months prior to that album being released so you know Janet Janet uh, Janice Joplin was never a, a super star as far as she knew like she had concerts yeah you know she had many concerts and, and she was big I mean she, she certainly was people loved her but she never knew that 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 uh, album would just go like through the roof so anyway what's kind of a, a I try to do it as a sweet thing is to have Janice teaching Jimi Hendrix Jimi Hendrix obviously we know you, you, you wouldn't find him with an acoustic guitar you know they're they were on this bus trip and they just all decided hey let's stop that we're near the Grand Canyon let's stop and stay overnight have a little fireside sing here sing along and uh, people have seen the guitar they've noticed the guitar and actually on the guitar that she's teaching Jimmy uh, the, the the stuff for Bobby McGee uh, they noticed that there's a Red Wings logo on there I had one guy said I love the painting I don't want it because it's got Red Wings thing on it and uh, until he realized that Jimi Hendrix I borrowed Paul McCartney's guitar for Jimi Hendrix in here so that's why that's why there is a guitar with the Red Wings. If you look at, that's a, a, a Epiphone a guitar that Paul McCartney still plays to this day. It's a right hand acoustic guitar turned left hand. The pick guard is on the wrong, it's at the top instead of the, the bottom. And I always laugh because you really can't take a right hand guitar and just turn it into a left hand guitar. There's some special dressing that has to be done. There's special things you have to do with the the nut that holds the uh, strings off the board but anyway so uh, Jimmy did that with his guitars he actually took an electric guitar right hand and turned it to a uh, the opposite it always looked funny as heck because it really the knobs were all on the wrong side and everything. so anyway yeah yeah I, I, and and the pick guard I mean this this guitar and as a matter of fact I mean Paul's guitar today looks as like brand new so I don't know how he's playing it without making all of the damage part that should be there can I tell a little story? Is it about the song? Janis Joplin. Well, I was going to say the one about Bobby McGee in a minute. Oh, you go right ahead. That's not what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. About. Well, anyway, that's what I was getting at. The, the, that's why I was warning you about the stories, because the stories do go on. In my life, I've had, I think, three or four times right now where I have what is called, like I'm supposed to be psychic in certain ways. That's why I'm the Wizard of Art. <laughs> no, no. But no, but I, I do have these really weird, weird, weird psychic things happening. And I've had I'll it vouch for that. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I've had it I will. <laughs> I've had it like a few times and what they are is they're they're so they, what, what they are is I have proof with other people that it happened and they are too complex to be just mm -hmm. coincidence. So Anyway, I'm painting away, I'm painting at the painting. We're right here, just three feet to the right here, the, the painting was. And when I paint, if I'm doing Paul McCartney stuff, I got the Moloch tire on, I, uh, you know, when I did the Blues Brothers, I put the Blues Brothers, the Sweet Home Chicago, I listened to that day in and day out. On this one, because Janice is teaching Jimi Hendrix, uh, you know, me and Bobby McGee, I'm playing the music. So and when I'm painting away, my doors shut a lot of times. If I'm really into something, especially portrait, when I'm working on portraits here, these portraits can take a day, day and a half each. And this one is so unique because she's got her yellow glasses on, her rose-colored glasses, and you've got to see through the glasses. So anyway, Colleen comes tapping at the door, and I hear a little, right, on my door. And she knows she can't knock on the door because she'll scare the hell out of me. So, yeah, there's a paintbrush all of a sudden right across the painting, you know. You know. So, anyway, the music is just pounding away in here, you know, me and Bobby McGee. And Colleen opens the door carefully. She says, Ron, I've got a customer that you don't know on the phone. You know, he's called in. He's an artist, and he really, he really wants to, uh, somehow he got through to you, right? We were chatting. Yeah, so anyway, he, he said, he's only got a couple little questions. Would you take your time and, and talk to him? And I said, yeah, I mean, you know, like if Colleen's opening the door, she knows the, the, the policies, eh? the, the, 
the way we go around here. So anyway, I said, sure, no problem. And I start talking to this guy, and here I am, I'm sitting here, I'm painting Bobby McGee, or Janice playing Bobby McGee, the music is playing, I'm talking to this artist, and I said, hey, you know, this subs, I don't remember what he was asking me about, to be honest, I said, it's really interesting, you know, if you want more information, just let me know, and what's your name, so I can let these guys know that if you call in, I'll, I'll take your call, and he says, Robert, and I said, Robert, Robert who, and he says, Robert McGee. And it's like, whoa, wait a second, you know, I almost fall off my chair because I think here's, maybe Colleen's been talking to him, he's joking around with me or something <laughs> like that. So I've got the music Bobby McGee playing, I'm painting Janis Joplin, playing Bobby McGee to J Jimi Hendrix. And I said, do they ever call you Bobby? He says, oh, of course they call me Bobby. I said, so you are actually Bobby McGee? And he says, yeah. And he became a great customer yeah. for her. Nice he's, oh, he's a wonderful guy. He's yeah. actually... Uh, he works at the uh, the jail. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a big, brawny guy, but he's a good artist. Yeah. So <laughs> nice person. But but th I've had two or three of those coincidences. That I'm writing those into the book that I'm doing. The the Wizard of Art is, and if I, I, you guys are worried about it or wondering about it, my God, the amount of work, and it's not like I don't work at it. You know, they I go quiet in this this office for days at a time working on this book. So. Go ahead. You wanted to tell I a little story, and I've just—I've got the camera now. I, mean, <laughs> just, I just think it's kind of a neat because it's Janis Joplin, and it was sort of a connection. Do you? Re <laughs> we're going back. Oh late. my goodness! Yes. Yeah. Sort yeah. of a connection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Late seventies, um, and we were visiting a friend of ours who was in Toronto, worked at a jeweler's. In a jeweler was uh, actually. Ken Walker. He was cousins Walker's of Thor Eaton. Yeah, of the Eaton's the family. Eaton's there, family. Yeah. yeah. So we'd be up in the office and just chatting away. And he said to Ron and I, and this is, again, uh, this is in the 70s. There was no Sunday shopping. Everybody was, oh, yeah. you know, Banks places. are closed. Everything is closed at 6. Like, this is the yeah. old style stuff. Oh, you know, there were no stores yeah. open at night. Anyway, this fellow, uh, Ken says to Ron and I, are you guys doing anything at the moment? We said, no, we're waiting for our friend, Shelly. And, and she's uh, already gone home. She was, was already gone was home. She? Yeah. I couldn't yeah. remember. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Yeah. So anyway, we said no, and he said, would you mind helping me take a couple boxes to the bank? And we went, well, that's impossible because the banks are closed at 6. Like, that's not going to happen. Three, uh, back then it was like 3 I can't remember, but afternoon. anyway, he said, oh, no, no, they'll be open for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thought, okay, like, what's this all about? And he said, yeah, I got to take a couple boxes because I got to put them in the vault. So as we're walking down Toronto someplace, we've got these boxes. They've got three of each one of us had, yeah, had a, a box, box about the size of a liquor yeah. or wine yeah, case. They were type of thing, yeah, they were squarish. Yeah, cardboard box. And Ron says to Ken, do you mind asking me what's in there? And he well, said, they're. If they're I ask you, <laughs> you mind if I ask you? What uh, what did I say? <laughs> no, no <right. laughs> you confused. <laughs> oh, did I say that? Oh, that's funny. We laugh okay. about it. I, we can laugh no, at Colleen okay. about those things. Yeah. That's, anyway. We can get away with it. So anyway, Ron said, "Do you mind me asking what's in the box?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Ken says, "Well, they're they're uh, footage. It's reels. They're uh, you know video tapes. The old not video. They were big video. They were tapes. the old." old-fashioned reels. Oh, you're right, too. No, they film. weren't videos, was yeah. yeah. They were films, because yeah. they were they were tin, the tin films. Yeah, yeah. And, and he said, um, now I might not have this part right, you might not correct that, I'll yeah. <laughs> but uh, he said that uh, he had rented a train and took it across um, Canada. Which we didn't know about at the time, and everybody else in Canada knew about yeah, it. Yeah, because he was a promoter, he yeah, was a music yeah. promoter also. Well, him, and, him and Thor Eaton did yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. And John Brower, yeah. who became my manager. Yeah. Anyway, twenty years yeah, later. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, I don't like naming all those names, but anyway, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. They're all real pieces. No, of no, history. they are. Yeah. Anyway, this was a whole film that he did, and it was of this train that went across Canada with a whole bunch of like Janis Joplin. People would get on and off this train yeah. at different. You can add this part. Well, and uh, on what they were doing is, the they were doing is, and, and everybody that knows anything about music in Canada, it was the Festival Express. The, everybody was on that train. Like, you know, everybody got on and off the train. Dylan was on the train for a bit. And they, they would just get on and off. And, 
and uh, all of the, the 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 band was there with yeah. Dylan at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. all of these guys are on the train. The Doobie Brothers were on the train. You know, all Janice kinds. was on the train. Anyway, he filmed all of this. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said at the end, this was cool because we had then gone to the bank, got you know, dropped off these films, kind of got back to his office. We were sitting there, and he said, and he said, yeah. He said at the end of this. Uh, they made me this train, and it, he said Janis Joplin made it. And it was this like two by four. It was a two by four. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> with nails and things in it, and this train, and they all signed it. Everybody that was yeah. on the and and he picked up this thing that was in his office and handed it to yeah. Ron. And I was Ron sat there with this on my, my lap, yeah, and I was yeah. what the hell is this thing all Coolest about? Coolest thing, and all of these people yeah. had had signed it. And then y we had told this to a very good friend of ours, and years later. Well, I actually asked Ken, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Like, and w we got to the bank. What was so unusual is they had two armed guards at the front door, which I've never seen in Canada ever. And not the doors then. were wide open. Not the doors back were then. wide open. The manager was there, was nervous as hell. Yeah, not back then. And he let us in, and and I said the, and that's when we were talking about these things. And Ken says, "Oh yeah," he says, "I sold one of those reels to a mobster for fifty thousand dollars." <laughs> we we're talking back in the seventies. You could buy two houses for that, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and or a Rolls Royce for fifty thousand yeah. dollars. And you know, we walk in and and out of there, and and everybody's nervous, and the vaults are all open. You know, everything was open. Yeah. So anyway, and he said, someday there'll be a movie. There'll be a movie, you're yeah, right. Someday we're going to make a movie out of this thing. So this friend of ours called one day. From we Florida. Were, yeah, we were sitting here, and he goes, Ron, you're not going to believe this. They made that movie you're talking about. I said, what the hell movie? So look it up. Google it. It's Festival Express. Yeah. It's like a documentary. And you'll see at the end, they'll show you this. Um, they actually show Janis Joplin. With this, bringing the train out that yeah. I had on my lap we, and handing it to yeah. to the walkers yeah. and to Eaton's. Yes, it was her presentation. They bought a piece of two by four and one three foot length of H O track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little tiny diesel engine with nine cars because that's what it was, and yeah. it was all supposed to be wired down, but it was all falling all over the place. But yeah, the the signatures on that thing, man. Yeah, just the coolest. Yeah. Just I just think that's a yeah. neat piece of history, and it's fun to put. So, it's yeah, fun so to just say, you know. Yeah. Festival Express, you got to see. It. Check it out. It's a good. Yeah, it's yeah. a good documentary yeah. too. Oh yeah, it's a very good documentary. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And then what we did was uh, 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 a lot of people, most people, don't recognize this man. I, I mean, if you're from the hippie hippie days, and if you were the ultimate hippie, that's Timothy Leary. And I always, one of my favorite songs is you know, one of, yeah, <laughs> that's one of my favorite songs by Moody Blues, yeah. <laughs> and actually now, you know, it's funny because you know, when I'm younger and I hear these songs, I was so damn naive that I didn't know what they were singing about, right? So he's going to take you on his astral flight around the bay. I mean, you know, it's telling you exactly what he's all about. Timothy Leary being the man of coin. Tune in, turn on, and drop out. Drop he was actually out. a professor, and uh, he uh, just thought, well, I think I just want to be a hippie. And he went off and quit his job and had it. You know, it's funny, I, hopefully David Suzuki never sees this, this piece. Because Timothy Leary was the kind of guy, man, when you, you had, the, he'd have 10 students over at his apartment or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, Oh, I see. I didn't even realize she's actually showing. <laughs> yeah. So, and 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 he and you get around. You get you get stoned, and that was how he did all of his psych psychological work and stuff like that. It was that was what he was all about. You know, hallucinatory drugs and everything. So, but d you know, uh, people don't know, but David Suzuki, <laughs> when he had kids over at his uh, his. Uh, apartment for extra tutoring. He he had the old hippie bandana on and, oh. he, and he'd be smoking up with the kids. And you know it's funny because I yeah, well, I'm maybe I'm not supposed to tell the story but I will anyhow. I remember when we, we saw David in in Hollywood when we did the unveiling of the, the Blues Brothers piece and he said, oh, I, I think I really excuse my language, I think I really pissed Dan Aykroyd off last night because he I was at his house and everybody's smoking doobies, and I wouldn't do it. And I, I and he says, I, I did that with my students way back when. <laughs> <I was> <laughs> <there>. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and you know, you look at David. Like, I mean, who wouldn't be? I mean, you know, the guy was a hippie of hippies. Sure. Right? Yeah. Anyway, for so, sure. but I don't think he really peeved uh, Dan no. Aykroyd. But yeah, that's funny. There's was funny stories that are happening around this. So anyway, uh, the 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 whole scene is meant to be. They're on a travel. They're going across the nation. They're going to go there and all, all the way there, all the way back. And the hippie movement is just starting to happen. It becomes big, big, big. This bus actually ended up in Woodstock afterwards. There was a second bus that was done, and I don't know what year it is, and I won't say it because I'll screw it up. I, it's not that long ago. They actually had reconstructed another bus, and they, they took that on a, a, the same tour, straight across the United States and, and back. And that one was really cool because they had an FM radio station on board. So if you were... Within, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand feet or half a mile of the bus, you would actually pick up that station. And when you pull up beside the bus, it would say, tuned to, remember at the, uh, the yeah. old drive-in theaters, yeah. tuned to, you know, 850 FM or something like that. And then you'd actually be able to listen to what these guys are doing. They were broadcasting from the bus. <laughs> and probably all high as hell, you know. But anyway. Nobody does that anymore. Nobody, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> My love, uh, this, and just... So I can boast about my art. I, I, I guess I, people tell me I deserve the right to do that on a rare occasion. But uh, this is actually, this piece of the bus is actually one of the nicest pieces of painting. Uh, there's, I probably got about 10 pieces of my painting that I really, 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 really love. This part of the bus, I absolutely, it, it blows me away every time I look at it. That this it came here, That whole front end of that okay. bus is just... It's stunning, I and, like and it too. I mean, the lights have the right chrome, and the, the chrome is nice and beautiful and deep, and you know, it really, it really came across for me, you know. I'd this like a shirt in that. Yeah. Oh, we should do a shirt. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> we're talking about actually doing, Colleen. I want to do we're, scarves. We're going to do some scarves, <laughs> some really high-end scarves. Silk. Silk scarves. With these yeah. colors? Oh yeah. my gosh, they'd be beautiful. So we're sitting around the fire, we're singing me and Bobby McGee. We should have had that ready. We could have just like played out on it. Yeah. Yeah. To do is Can we talk about how this is framed too? Oh, though, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're going to run on here. Yeah. So, so when you buy one of these pieces, you can, do we, you can do we have them by the print only? We don't? I no, don't can't so remember. We have them as far as... We've uh, always framed them, that's why. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, every piece that's ever gone out has been framed. Yeah. And what we did was, uh, Zane Kesey, it was Ken Kesey's son. I call him In Zane because he's, I don't know, man, I think Ken was probably like Shirley Temple compared to his son. But well, yeah, he's I, th I think he, I think... Some of those drugs actually yeah, wore I think, off yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, maybe before he was born. Oh eh? yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so story has it, and I, I don't know if there's any real documentation on this one, but story has it that they would go on their trip. They would actually, you know, just like at Woodstock, they swim in the pond. Well, that's how they took their bath. They would go in a pond. And uh, I think it was supposed to be Ken Kesey. It might not have been. I, I, I would actually think it was Neil uh, Cassidy because he was a real, real creative nut bar. But anyway, uh, and one of them poured paint onto the surface of the water because there was so much paint on the bus. And then when he went in with his white T-shirt, he came out. And this, again, I could be they all wrong. They would dip the paint. They would well, they dip actually, the shirts. Well, from what I saw or read was that he actually walked into the water and came out. Oh. Because they actually do have, they, they have white outfits. Oh, yeah. Okay. They have That's, almost yeah. like, like when you go to a race, uh, yes. the, the whites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bad term to use today. But uh, the, the, what well, they call them whites back then. Uh, the white outfits, which were white jumpsuits, they, uh, you can... Almost, I think you can even buy them today. Right. The Kesey would, they would wear them and they would go into the water and they come out and they'd be all, they would look like, like this. Oops, like that. Am I pretty good there? Yeah, I can pull the picture of it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and then that is a bus and it's so cute because Zane called it little further. <laughs> Aw, that's a little further. That is a hand painted by Zane Kesey piece.
an original. I mm -hmm. think they're really cool. So in the frames, they, uh, we always put one of these. We have several in stock at all times. They even got the little further on the front. Yeah, and then the further on the front Depends of this bus is the second further. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> trying to get a hold of it. Bob Saul's watching. Bob ordered some for me one time. It's like, you know, <laughs> this is this is the the worst business in the world. Like you don't know when you're going to get these buses. I'll tell you right now. So, yeah, if you get a chance to get one of these Zane buses, the Zane Kesey buses, buy it. You know. Anyway, so yeah, so we put those in the frame, and they come with their very own gifts or their own certificate of authenticity. <laughs> I should know that after thirty years, authenticity. And I am going to. We're going to. So anyway, so when we frame. Yeah. This. Sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> we, get, we get stupid. I here. actually put one of these in the in the frame for you. Yeah. At one of these little buses. A little shadow box. Yeah. And you get to pick out whatever ones we have here you can pick Bureau. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or else, you know, I mean if we send them off, we send one to California, it's just like we pick out a nice colorful Trust me, one. I'll pick a good one that matches because well, you know, I, I love them. The problem is is I am cutest. a purple freak and every time I choose one yeah. somebody else gets it. <laughs> so anyway, so and I, I gotta sell just a little bit I guess. I just Press proofs for this, framed press proofs, and they're always framed when they go out of here. So the framed press proofs are $9.95. They're still the same as they were when they started out. Artist proofs are $7.50. These are all framed. Yes. Beautifully framed, and they're in a yeah. shadow box frame, archival, museum quality, everything else. Uh, Sign and numbered pieces are $695, always framed, in the same frame and everything. I, I like the memorabilia things that we do. I, I like it as much as signatures. Oh, to I me, do. I think having a piece of actual history, like we did here, and, and she's showing you right now the blue nose. We have a piece of the original blue nose. You know, the snowbirds, we have stamps that were actually flown with the snowbirds. There was, you know, thousands of sets, yeah. but there were. And then the other one, we have a handmade remark, uh, the Man of War piece. Uh, on the press proofs, we even put a, one of the paintbrushes I used to paint the painting. So it really gives it a real nice extra to it. Something so anyway, you won't get anywhere yeah. else. And I, I, you know what, I, I think sometimes we get a little bit too selling on these. Uh, but So I'm not going to carry on with that too much. That thing, if you use the, the, the if you want to purchase one you get $50, 50 off, just use 50 TC as the, the uh, code for that, for the discount code. Anyway, so Magic Bus, I think I didn't miss too much. I don't, and the original is for sale. <laughs> I got it. I, ne I never sit, tell people that, eh? No, you don't. I never tell people that. I think because most of the times people assume that yeah. it's already sold. Yeah, and I don't, uh, you know, I don't push it. I don't push too hard. If somebody wants an original, they're, they're, it's the rarest thing you can have of mine, you know, and, uh, and when you get to see these f things firsthand, like we, we fight like crazy. Oh, that picture that she's got up right now looks really, really strong. That's, really close to what the original looks like. Okay, that is the original. Yeah. yeah, and that is Colleen's choice of frame. She did a beautiful job. So anyway, thank you for coming to see us and the Magic Bus today. We're gonna be doing these every four to five weeks and then they turn into kind of a storytell thing. Sure, we, it'll go on the website. And if you got any questions about it, you know, even after we're off today, Ask us the questions because it'd be nice because we are going to do a, a kind of a production video wrapped around what we did today. So I can always ask, a, answer your questions by adding to it too with a little voiceover. Okay, guys. Hey, thanks for showing up. Really Night, appreciate everybody. it. Yeah, and we'll see you later. Take care. Bye bye. Easy, Skippy.